Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Now I'm pretty sure many of you have been waiting for this video, so I'm not going to disappoint. Today we're talking about the Arctic Circle Off Grid Expedition 2023. And this is the first part of the after action report. Now we're just going to skip all of the uh, normal video editing and things like that. We're going to show you what happened. We're going to talk about it, what worked, what failed, and what was actually the end result. Spoiler alert, the end result was pretty freaking amazing. So stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. So the first thing that happened to us, <laughs> the first negative thing to happen to us uh, up on that summit was the weather. We simply weren't prepared or not well prepared anyway. Actually, we got up here, it started raining and now uh, I don't know if you could see it on the camera or not, but, uh, well, it's hail. <laughs> it is what it is, but we're going to try to make the best out of it. The weather came in, a cold front came in. We had uh, practically snow. Some of us called it sleet, but uh, anyway, practically snow, sleet, freezing rain, rain, and heavy winds. All of that really kicked us in the butts. There's no other better way to put it. On the first night, or let's say immediately following the first night of that bad weather, we lost a guy. He was wet, cold, and uh, needed to get to a warm place. So we took him to our third day place, our cabin, uh, which we were not supposed to get to until the third day, so that uh, he could uh, warm up, take care about himself, while the rest of us stayed on the summit and uh, got it done. So. The takeaway there is uh, you need to be prepared. Even though it's summertime, I mean, we were in the last week of May, this is still the Arctic Circle. We need to have winter equipment. So I took my, my lightweight sleeping bag. I didn't put the inner tent inside my tent, uh, but at least I had my tent to keep us warm. We also used the lava that was on site to, uh, to you know, get out of the wind, but uh, hey, we did what we could to, uh, to get out of the wind and stay warm. Three of the four of us stayed up there the entire time, or at least until the third day. So was it that bad? I don't know, it's a matter of perspective, yeah? Anyway, if I had the uh, crystal ball and I could see the future, I would definitely have taken up my winter equipment. No doubts about it. Even Snapper was uh, shaking and freezing in the tent. I had to give her my jacket and uh, try to keep her warm over the night and then warm myself up in the morning with the big roaring fire in the lava. You know, lessons learned, be prepared. Even though this is ham radio, you know, sometimes this isn't a joke. Uh, we went up there to get it done. Uh, we got it done, but we also got our butts handed to us. So keep this in mind, take things seriously. Even when you think it's uh, just gonna be a nice, easy summit with little risk, there's always going to be risk, especially up here in the Arctic. The Canadians know it, the Norwegians and Swedes, they know it, even North Germany and Denmark, they understand. Now, although for the most part, our weather failure was uh, isolated to a single team member, it was still the team's responsibility to ensure this team member was adequately prepared for the potential weather we would encounter up on the hill. Whether that team member learns from the experience or not, you know, we'll see it next time. But having to take care about this team member, getting to a warm place and uh, a secure place while the rest of us remained on the summit, actually, well, we blew our fuel budget taking care of him. That's our responsibility and that was that's what the budget was for. But uh, it is kind of a bummer that we, you know, blew through that budget uh, unnecessarily. If we would all have simply been prepared for the potential weather, none of us would have to have left the summit and uh, we would all have been squared away. Well, live and learn. Now, whether that team member learns the lesson or not, I don't know. Personally, I've adapted my equipment to remove this potential failure uh, 
from my expeditions in the future. So from now on, I've got a core kit. It's got a sleeping bag, winter rated down to minus 15 Celsius. It's got a sleeping mat to insulate me from the cold ground. It's got a teepee tent to block those incoming winds. It's got a fire kit to quickly start a fire wherever we are in whatever type of weather. It's got a microfiber towel, an ax or hatchet, a jet boil or other type of stove, a 90 watt solar panel, which is always with a kit, a rubber coated gloves so that uh, my hands stay warm and dry if I'm setting up antenna equipment or other things in the rain. The backpack is a Savota Yakari XL and the kit includes a first aid kit. Now having this core kit ready to go makes it much easier to get deployed. The only thing I need to add is the communications module, including a radio, a computer, a power supply, and things like that. The radio module I choose is based on the requirements of the expedition or the deployment. Now having multiple radio modules ready to go is quite costly, so it might not be practical. Still, there's no denying how having a ready-to-go kit equipped for the conditions we're operating in would have made all the difference in the Arctic Circle Off-Grid Expedition 2023. Now, something I always promised to do on the channel was keep things real. I see no reason to change that now, so let's do so. Ultimately, when we're talking about off-grid communications for survival, for disaster relief, for emergency communications, whatever, Perhaps it's time for groups to start setting guidelines for the type of equipment team members should carry. Now, this might rub some people the wrong way, but ultimately, if we look at it this way, if we show up at a place where we're actually supposed to contribute to disaster relief, to the aid effort, to setting up communications for whatever reason, if we are so poorly equipped that we become a part of the problem, we prevent the group or team as a whole from achieving their overall goals. So maybe the real question is, which one of us wants to be the weak link in our group or team's chain? I certainly don't want to be. Now I can already hear the moaning and frustration coming from the less dedicated side of the room, but hold on a moment, guys. Actually, we can use this equipment guidelines or the researching of equipment to create some guidelines by getting our people out in the field, testing the equipment, what works, and more importantly, what doesn't work, compiling all of that information as a group, getting information from all of the interested group members, all of the contributors, and compiling that into a, a document of equipment guidelines. I think that's a brilliant idea, and it's a great way to get people out in the field for testing. Now, never mind if our guidelines are for our camping or survival gear or for our rigs or portable power. We can create guidelines, which I'm sure most of our team members would love to contribute to. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's move on. For the Arctic Circle Off-Grid Expedition 2023, we did things a little bit differently. Now, previously, Snapper and I would have gone off someplace out in the world and uh, camped there for several days, done our thing, and bugged out. Now, it wasn't just Oliver, Ed, and I on the summit. This time, we decided to ask another person to come along. His name is Yussi, and he's from Rovaniemi, Finland. Now, Yussi wasn't doing any radio communications or anything like that. His sole purpose for being there was to act as a support person, a guide, uh, to do some cooking for us and allow us to focus primarily on our radio communications and getting our camps squared away. Now, you can really begin to appreciate this after a frustrating day of troubleshooting and repairs when that fourth person along on the expedition surprises you with some freshly grilled chicken over a campfire. Now, in all my time blogging and on YouTube, I can't recall any other bloggers or YouTubers talking about support for those operators who are actually in the field to do a job. So once again, from the off-grid group communications perspective, we should consider allocating the correct resources for the tasks we're out in the field to do. 
I believe we have mistakenly omitted this support role from off-grid communications. We're not just playing radio out in the field. At some point when you do it for real, the radio operator needs to be supported as well. Now, in addition to keeping us fed and taking care of our basic needs while we were up on the summit, our support member was also our driver for the trip. This turned out to be an excellent investment in time and logistics. When we lost our fourth team member, it was our support team member who actually got him to our cabin, got him warm, got him fed, and was able to get back to us to continue supporting the expedition. So really, although we had some troubles, this expedition was an excellent learning experience. If you have any questions about what you've seen in this first episode of the Arctic Circle Off-Grid Expedition 2023, just drop them in the comments. In the next episode of the Arctic Circle Off-Grid Expedition 2023, we're going to talk about radio equipment, our communications goals, and what we learned from the experience. Look, guys, couldn't have done this expedition without you, and especially without my patrons and YouTube members and all the other operators who supported this expedition. Also, I'm really grateful to Pile Up DX in Sweden, Gigaparts in USA, and Super Antenna in USA for supporting this expedition. I couldn't have done it without them, and I hope you all can show some love. Now, there's another group of people I'd like to thank, and that's all of you who have sent me APRS and WinLink messages while we were up on the summit. You guys were absolutely magnificent, and a huge thanks for your support. Hey, I almost forgot to mention it, but uh, the ARRL did a story on me in the July issue of QST. You might want to take a look at that article to get some perspective on why I do what I do with this channel. All right, guys. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please consider leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. You're all absolutely awesome. Ciao.